Okay, so you're here because you're looking into treatment options for peritoneal carcinomatosis. Yeah, and that can be a really tough topic to get your head around. To say the least. Absolutely. And we've got a ton of research to go through today. We do, but the good news is yeah. we're going to break down the most important stuff. All the takeaways. Because you can feel more confident. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Navigating this information. Absolutely. Making informed decisions right. about your care. Yeah, it's a serious diagnosis for sure. But the field has come a long way. It really has. In recent decades. So that's encouraging. There's more options, yeah. more hope for patients than ever before. That's so crucial to hear. Absolutely. When you're you're facing something like this. Yeah. So to start off, peritoneal carcinomatosis. What does that even mean? It basically means cancer has spread to the lining of your abdomen. Okay. Which is called the peritoneum. The peritoneum. And and what's really important to understand is that treatment isn't one size fits all. Right. Treatment's going to involve a whole team of specialists. It does. Radiologists, oncologists, I may break you. surgeons, pathologists all working together to create the most effective plan for each individual patient. So it really feels less like you're on your own. And more like you have this whole team in your corner. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about some of those options. I know surgery is often considered like the gold standard. Yeah. But it's not always possible. Right. We're talking about cytoreductive surgery oh. with the goal of removing all visible cancerous tissue. So if you imagine a patient whose tumor is localized mm -hmm. and hasn't spread extensively, they would be a good candidate for this type of surgery. Okay. But if the cancer has spread too widely or involves critical structures that can't be removed, I see. then surgery may not be the best option. So it's not just about whether the cancer can be removed. It's also about the safety yeah. and the feasibility I mean, of the procedure itself. Our research also mentions if there's multiple metastases in the lungs or bones, yeah, or if the cancer comes back mm -hmm. quickly after surgery for the primary tumor, then surgery might not be the best choice either. Right. It's a lot to take in. It is a lot. Yeah. A lot to consider. So so what do you do if if surgery isn't an option? Well, in those cases, systemic chemotherapy is usually the primary approach. Okay. And this means delivering chemo through the bloodstream, which allows it to reach cancer cells throughout the body. Throughout the whole body, so it's not as targeted. Right. It's not as targeted as surgery, but it can be very effective That's in right. controlling the cancer. And is it is it only used? when surgery isn't possible? Not necessarily. Sometimes it's used before surgery to shrink tumors and oh. make them easier to remove. Oh, so it kind of yeah. preps the area. Exactly. Oh. And other times it's used after surgery to further control any remaining cancer cells. So it's like attacking it from multiple angles. For I see. I see. Now, I know there's also yeah. this newer technique that's been gaining attention. It's called PIPAC. Yes, PIPAC stands for Pressurized intraperitoneal aerosol chemotherapy. Okay. It's a minimally invasive approach. So less invasive. Much less invasive than traditional surgery. Okay. Okay. And it uses aerosolized chemotherapy. Aerosolized. Yeah, it's delivered as a fine mist through laparoscopy. So what are the what are the advantages of that? Well, for one, it seems to be less toxic than systemic chemo. Okay. And it also appears to penetrate tumor tissue more effectively. Is it more targeted? In a way, yes, okay. because the chemo is delivered directly to the peritoneum. That's fascinating. It is. So you mentioned this is a newer technique. How widely is it being used? It's still being studied, mm. but it's showing a lot of promise, okay. both as a primary treatment and as an option after surgery. Wow. So that's really encouraging. It seems like there's a lot of exciting developments happening. Absolutely. And that's what's so important for patients to know. That research is constantly evolving. Mm. And what might not be an option today could be standard practice tomorrow. That's a great point. So we've covered a lot of ground today. Surgery, IPEC, systemic chemo, pie pack. It's mm. a lot to take in. But it's also hopeful knowing that there are so many options being explored and refined. Absolutely. So if you're facing peritoneal carcinomatosis, mm -hmm. remember to stay informed, stay curious, and keep asking questions. And talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. Or about the best treatment options for you. That's the most important. Absolutely. Okay, great. Great. Well, this has been another deep dive. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And we'll see you next time. See you later.